every breath. Amen. 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 I, I am thrilled to be able to be with you today, and I just really feel the presence of the Lord. Uh, I feel like the Lord wants me to do a few things before we get in the Word. We want to set our minds on the Lord and be ready to receive exactly what He wants us to have today. Last Sunday, uh, the Lord gave us a word about that he was going to restore, that a spirit of restoration. Do you remember? Yes. Spirit of restoration had been released in this house. And um, this week the Lord spoke to me and he said, when I give a word, when a word is given in the church and the church just sits on that word, it's very easy for you to say, oh, that was a great word. Well, if it's God, it'll happen. But if we sit on the word, it's actually insulting the Holy Spirit because God never gives a word to waste words. If he gives a word, he intends to do it. Amen? Amen? But there is a responsibility on our part. We don't just sit down and wait for it to happen. He asked us to cooperate with him. Amen? Amen? So that means we need to pray. And I just ask you as a church to really start praying every day. Father, I thank you for the spirit of restoration that is released in this church, released in my life, in my family, in my business. Just begin praying and thanking the Lord. And God, any adjustments that you need to make in my life that might be a barrier to me receiving that restoration, then you show me, God, and I'll make the adjustment. Amen? Are you with me? So God is releasing that spirit of restoration. Uh, I found out this week that uh, two people in the, the young adult group had received the same word earlier. And in fact, last Sunday in the youth service, they were praying for the release of the spirit of restoration uh, over the church and then came into the main service. And that's the word that was given. Praise God. Amen. The Holy Spirit is a God of order. He has everything in order. So I just want to give a moment. And I, I just thank the Lord. The Holy Spirit's already used Pastor Chris. But... I want you just to anybody in this house right now that needs restoration in an area of your life. You don't have to say what it is. I would like you to stand. You need restoration in an area of your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to do what is on the heart of God today. And I want to invite you as a congregation to find someone who is standing and to get near them so you can pray for them. And even if you need restoration, I'm going to ask you to do something different. I'm going to ask you to pray for someone else today instead of pray for yourself. I believe as you pray restoration for someone else, the Holy Spirit's going to bring restoration for you. Thank you, Amen. Okay. All right. There we go. So, so I want you to find somebody to pray for. Everybody find somebody to pray for. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give place to the anointing of the Holy Spirit in this house today. Holy Spirit, we are dependent on you. We give place to you. We thank you for the word that the Lord has spoken over this church, that the spirit of restoration has been released in this house. And Father, we receive it with joy this morning. Father, I thank you that that is your nature that God, you are a God of restoration. And Father, I pray over this congregation that your word that has been spoken shall be fulfilled in the lives of your people. We speak restoration to bodies, to health, in the name of Jesus, Lord. As we pray for Pastor Ron, we declare total health and healing over his body in the name of Jesus. Total health and healing. I thank you, God. You are victorious. You are victorious. You are the God that heals. You are the God that restores. And anybody who has faced a, a bad report from the doctor, Father, we set our, our hearts on you. It is your word that stands forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will never pass away. Father, you watch over your word to perform it, Father. And as we speak your word, Get out of this house. You are not welcome in this place. For by the stripes of Jesus. 
God. In the name of Jesus, thank you for restoration in our children. We declare from generation to generation to generation we will serve the Lord. We will not have wayward children, but we will have children that hear happen for, as, as a church. You know, ladies know this very well. When you get pregnant, you're so excited that you're going to have a baby. But you're pregnant for the first time, you have no idea the pain you're going to go through. <laughs> All you can think about, oh, I'm going to hold this sweet baby. But you have to go through labor to give birth. And sometimes, very often, when God is going to release a new thing or take us to a new place, we go through labor pains. And it's hard. Things look the worst. Circumstances look the hardest. But God invites us in those moments to move in closer to Him, to set our faith above what we see, Amen. above what we hear, to move in close because it's in that moment in the labor pains when we're moving into God that He's able to do a transforming work in us so that we're able to move to a new level with Him. And you know my story. I've told you about my husband and I took all kinds of uh, labor classes, how to, because in America the men are with the women during labor, and I had all these classes to take, but as soon as the pain came, I forgot every lesson I'd ever taken. <laughs> and he was telling me, okay, we're, I think we're at this level and you need to be breathing like this, and don't you tell me how to breathe! I'm just trying to get oxygen! <laughs> but at one point, I remember um, the doctor was trying to tell me how to birth this baby, and the nurses were all trying to tell me, and Ron was over here trying to tell me. And in a moment, I realized there's nobody that's going to give birth to this baby but me. I've got to do the work to give birth to this baby. There are things, so many things, words, prophetic words spoken over this church. It's like a cloud that is hanging full of rain, getting ready to be released over this church. But we've been going through some labor pains. Amen? It's been a tough year. And we've been apart from you. You've been apart from us. And everybody's had a tough year. But we've got to be determined that we're not going to give up on this birth. If you, you can't stop in the middle of delivery. Otherwise, you're going to die and the baby's going to die. So we've got to give birth to the things that God has for us. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. I want you to just stir yourself up spiritually and get a determination. I'm going to dig into God and we're going to see God do a miraculous thing 
in our lives, but also in the church. There's a purpose. This church was birthed with a vision to touch nations, not just nations within these walls, but nations, the nation of Kenya. But I, but I believe this church is going to touch, touch the nations of the world. We've had a, a closed-in focus, but they're, they're, the Lord has a world view for this church. We're going to touch nations for the Lord. There's so many things I'm biting my tongue not to tell you. Uh, we're gonna, Ron and I are going to share it together. Uh, words of prophecy that were spoken over Ron and I, spoken over this church that we, I promise we will share with you. But I just want to ask you, increase your prayer. When a lady's pregnant, you have to increase your intake of food. You have to take care of yourself. So increase your prayer life. Dig into the Word. If you've been spending 20 minutes uh, reading the Bible every day, let's make it 45 minutes. Will you, will you do it? Will you increase your time in the Word? Increase your time in prayer. And begin to pray, Father, I ask that every prophetic word that's been spoken over this church will come to pass. Hallelujah. And you get me ready, God for what you have for us. Amen? Amen. One of the, one of the, I will share this with you, uh, about three years ago, the Lord gave me a vision over this church, and I, I may have shared it before, I can't remember, but I saw the grounds of this church covered with people, and it wasn't a Sunday, it was weekdays. There were so many people that were here that were just streaming in the gate that we were having to, we could, couldn't fit everybody in here, we were having to arranged people in groups of five or six and they were sitting in groups of five or six all around the compound and church members you were ministering to them preaching to them praying of people were getting healed people were getting saved people were getting delivered so the lord wants to prepare you and us to do what his i still believe that will come to pla to come to pass we lord we just speak right now father I ask you to forgive us when we have ignored or not carried prophetic words spoken over this church. And Father, we take it up right now in Jesus' name. We declare by the word of God that, Father, every prophetic word spoken over this church, that this church will not only affect us, but that, Lord, this church will be used by God to affect nations. We pray every prophetic word will come to pass in this church and through this church to many other lives. Father, for the honor and the glory of your name, Lord Jesus. May you be honored. We thank you and we declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to ask you to continue to pray for Ron. Uh, we've had another week of battle, but we know the enemy has lost already. Amen. We're learning so much about, it's not what we see, it's not what we hear. It's listening to the Holy Spirit. Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm not moved by what I see, I'm not moved by what I hear. I am only moved by what I believe. Amen. Begin to ask yourself, what is it I believe? Not is it what I hear pe other people say. Take out a piece of paper and start writing. What do I believe? And where does it come from? Do I just say I believe something because I heard somebody else? You need to know what you believe because the Bible says so. Amen? Amen. That's your firm foundation. So continue to pray for Ron. He actually uh, is over the infection. But we found a, another underlying issue of a very high blood pressure. He's had very high blood pressure this week um, at stroke level. Uh, most of the week, uh, we went to a doctor Friday. And the doctor sent us right to a cardiologist. They are running tests. Um, and they put him on a blood pressure medicine. And um, he is resting. I'm, trying, I'm just keeping him real calm. <laughs> uh, he's resting. And uh, had planned to preach today. He has his sermon ready. And woke up this morning with excruciating back pain. Could not even hardly move. And uh, so I'm preaching today. And the Holy, he said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to do this. I said, it's the Holy Spirit. He's got this. He knows what to do. So anyway, he's resting today. But we need to fight for our pastor. Amen? Amen. I love my husband. And uh, I apologize if I've not been at church as much, involved in your lives as much. But my husband is my ministry right now. And I will, I'm here on Wednesday nights. And I'm going to be here during the week. But I need to minister to my husband. And uh, the Lord's restoring him. 
Uh, a few months ago, the Lord gave me a scripture. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom Amen. shall I fear? The Lord is the, is, is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? It's the Lord that holds life in our hands. And it has been a, a good week of just standing on the word of the Lord above every other circumstance. So just pray the Lord completely heals him and... Uh, we, we've got lots of things we want to do, and here the devils come in right as soon as we get here uh, to try and stop, but he's defeated. I'm so thankful that for that scripture. When the enemy comes in like a flood, Amen. the Lord does what? He raises a standard. That standard is the authority of who he is. Yeah. He moves in to fight our battles. And so this morning I said, okay, it's beginning to look like a flood, God, so you move in. I want to see you win this battle. And I think it's very significant there because of the, I think, I believe part of the attack that we have come under is because of the word that we are carrying within us. And we are not shaken. Ron is not defeated. Let me tell you, we are encouraged in the Lord. We're walking through this and standing on the word of the Lord. And my husband's going to be healthier and we're going to be healthier together so we can fulfill what God has for us. Amen. Okay, let's go to the sermon. Have you got the... PowerPoint. What is today? Who can tell me what today is? Well, there's the answer. <laughs> See, I'm an easy teacher. <laughs> uh, and, and also, this morning, between, between prayer time and getting ready for church, I lost my glasses. So I'm wearing my husband's today. And <laughs> so you bear with me. <laughs> today is Palm Sunday. And in the church world, it's a, it's a big day, uh, a lot of celebration of waving palms and glorifying the Lord. And, uh, but I want to talk about the significance of Palm Sunday. And if you can see the scriptures up there, I'd like you to write them down and spend some time reading uh, those passages this week. I want th we're entering into the week of um, Easter, and I would like you to just spend some extra time with the Lord. Just read over uh, the Easter story and ask God to speak to you. What is it that he wants to speak to you in this Easter time? This is a good time to just re-give ourselves to the Lord and say, I surrender to you. I belong to you, Lord. I want you to use me for your glory in these last days. Matthew 21. Um, Matthew 21, I'm going to read this to you. Matthew 21, verses 1 through 11. Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage uh, at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them, and immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved. All of the city was moved and said, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And we receive every part. Lord, we ask for the spirit of revelation and knowledge and understanding of you, Lord, as we enter your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, next slide. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit of the background of this story. This took place, uh, theologians say, on the Sunday before Jesus uh, was arrested. And there's debate on whether, depending on how you time it, whether it's Wednesday night or Thursday night, uh, when he was arrested. So this is like the Sunday before Jesus was arrested and he was entering into Jerusalem. Now he had already told his disciples that the time was coming that he would suffer and die. So you can imagine... 
that the thoughts that, that are going through Jesus' mind. Now, he is the son of God, but he was also operating through flesh as the son of man. So every feeling of maybe anxiety that we, me and you feel, he may have also been struggling with that. And so he's entering in the place that he knows will bring about his death. And he's actually at the, at the place called Beth Page, uh, Mount of Olives, on the hill on the eastern side of Jerusalem. Okay, so Jerusalem's on a hill, and then there's the Kidron Valley, and then there's another little hill, and that hill is Beth Page. And Jesus is, is there with his disciples, and he's looking onto Jerusalem. And this was the time of preparation for the Passover. So uh, historians, Bible scholars say there were probably at least 2 million, 2.7 million people. So Jerusalem is a huge, bustling, busy city at this time. Next slide. And so Jesus is standing there looking, and, and this is not a very good picture, but that gives you an idea. That is standing on the Beth Page side looking over into Jerusalem. You can, there's a valley down in between. And so Jesus is there, and, and he realizes now is the time to fulfill another prophecy. Uh, next slide. So we know that in the life of Jesus, he fulfilled between 300 and 400 prophecies uh, that had been given about the Messiah that he fulfilled as he was living the 33 and a half years on this earth to prove, not that he needs to prove, but to prove that he indeed is the Messiah. And in this passage uh, of, of uh, the Hosanna, of the, what we call Palm Sunday, um, he's fulfilling a passage out of Zechariah 9, 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your kings. We read it. See your king comes to you righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of the donkey. I'm going through this fast because I want to get to a point. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, the date of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem corresponds that very same day was called the, the tenth day of Nisan. Okay? Everybody say Nisan. Nisan. <laughs> like the car. <laughs> Nisan. This was the day uh, of, in preparation for the Passover when families chose the lamb that would be sacrificed. On the same day that Jesus was entering into Jerusalem was the same day that the sacrificial lambs, isn't that interesting? The sacrificial lambs were being chosen and they were separated out of the fold, out of the sheep uh, fold and taken uh, in preparation for the Passover uh, meal. And that just touched my heart so much because here is Jesus entering, separating himself, walking into his death sentence as the Lamb of God, that ultimate Passover Lamb, the Messiah, is walking into Jerusalem to prepare himself for the final once and for all sacrifice for our sins on that very same day. Next slide. And so uh, Jesus told the two disciples, go and, and get this donkey, this colt, this young don donkey. And, and um, you know, if I was a disciple, I'd have been, does, does he know ahead of time that we're going to steal his donkey? <laughs> they, but they somehow didn't ask, and they went, and he said... If this guy, whoever owns it, if they ask, just say, the Lord has need of it. And that's exactly what happened. They were untying, getting this little donkey. And the man says, uh, excuse me? <laughs> and they said, the Lord has need of it. And the Spirit of the Lord must have prepared that man's heart. He just released it. So he released that, that uh, little cult for Jesus. Next slide. And I think it's so interesting that this little cult had never been ridden. Never been broken in as, as they do with horses and, and donkeys and everything, um, but it was needed. It didn't have experience, but it was needed. And the cult was available. If Jesus can use a young donkey, he can use us. Amen? Yeah. Amen. What he's looking for is not necessarily experience, although there's nothing wrong with getting experience. What he's looking for most of all is just availability. Amen. Amen. And he can take care of, all, I've got down there on the bottom, all God needs is a yes. I may not have experience, Lord, but if you can use me, I'm available. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, next slide. And when Jesus sat on the colt, the colt did not buck. It did not kick, uh, which was so unusual. I just believe it was the spirit of the Lord. 
that touched even the animals. You know, the, in, in, when we were originally created, we were created with authority over animals. And the, in, when we entered sin, we lost some of that authority, but Jesus had it. And, and that colt just rested and let him ride on it. And may we be more like this donkey, amen? <laughs> Don't fight against God's purpose in your life. What is it about us that when God asks us to do something, we have a tendency to say, oh, I can't do that. No, 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 you know, get someone else to do that. Don't we do that? But I wish we could be more like this little donkey and say, I don't have any idea where I'm going <laughs> or, or where you're taking me, but okay, I will obey. That donkey didn't know that he was part of a pro prophetic word being fulfilled, but he was willing for the Lord to ride on him. We have no idea what prophetic word has been spoken that God wants to use us to fulfill if we'll just be available for him. Amen? Amen. 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 Next slide. So the disciples laid their clothes on, on the colt and Jesus sat on it. And the multitude began to put their cloaks and their branches. And that's where we get Palm Sunday from because it was branches from palm trees and other trees. That they laid in the road as a sign of respect for Jesus. And he walked along uh, on those branches and clothes. And he was entering in on the east side of Jerusalem as people were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Next slide. On the same day, historians say that it's recorded, on the same day, Pilate was entering the city from the west side of Jerusalem. So if you picture Jerusalem, Jesus is coming from the east side, and people are praising him, and the Roman authority is coming in the west side with the army marching uh, and uh, both on the same day, uh, two pr processions going on. Jesus entered as the Prince of Peace. Pilate entered as the arm of the law or the keeper of the peace. But Jesus is the one who has peace. He is the Prince of Peace. Next slide. So Pilate's procession pr represented power, glory, uh, and violence. He represented the Roman government governing over the Jewish people, over Israel. And Jesus' uh, procession represented majesty. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, yet all powerful in the eternal kingdom of God. Next slide. Uh, Matthew 21, 9. The crowds that went ahead of him and those who followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we know, Pastor Chris said it this morning, Hosanna means save us now. Save us now. Next slide. What, what they were saying though, and this is the point I want to get to. They were actually quoting a Psalm 118. O oh Lord, save us. O oh Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. During the Passover, this was a passage in Psalms that the, peop the families quoted in, in reference to a coming Messiah. In interesting. They, they, were, they were in their Passover quoting the scripture in reference to there must be a Messiah coming who will deliver us and restore the kingdom of David. But here in the scene, here is the Messiah standing before them, riding on a donkey actually, and the Jewish people are speaking of him as a prophet. Do you remember that last verse we yeah. read? Here's yeah. Jesus, a prophet. They're not seeing him as the Messiah, but they're still quoting that there's a Messiah coming that will save them from Roman rule. They're seeing Jesus as a political savior. Next, next slide. Uh, they, they saw Jesus, the son of David, who was coming to free them from the Roman oppression and reestablish the kingdom of David in Israel. So as he was entering Jerusalem, they saw him coming to do, uh, to do this, and they were saying, save us now. They weren't saying, save my soul. They were saying, save us from the Romans who are entering the city on the yes. other side and get, get rid of this Roman oppression on us, okay? Um, so they praised him from this perspective of what they wanted him to, to be for them, their political savior. Next slide. What they did not realize was that their primary need was not a political liberation, but a spiritual deliverance. Amen. That was Jesus' purpose for coming. As the Son of God, 
He came to free mankind from the bondage of sin and death. He came to set them free eternally, and they had settled for a temporary political freedom. Next slide. So what about us? We often only relate to God for what we need from Him. I've been guilty myself. Jesus was coming to save, uh, He was getting ready to lay His life down for, uh, to, to save us from sin for all of mankind. But here they were honoring Him, but only with the thought of political gain, of what they would gain. But this morning the Lord was just uh, melting my heart when I was praying about this and studying this. Jesus left his heavenly throne. You know, and, and the Lord talked to Ron that this Easter we need to focus on the love of God. What a love that God had for us. Yeah. Our memory verse, can anybody tell us what our memory verse this week is? Yes? 1 John? 1 First John? 4.10? First John, and, and, and in this is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the payment for our sin. It originated, love originated with God. And because he loved us so much, he sent his only son. He sent his only son to come down to this earth who left heaven's realm and lived in the flesh experiencing. The Bible says he was tempted in every way just as we were yet without sin. So he experienced everything we as humans experience. He operated through the limitation of flesh, even though he was the son of God. And so he experienced all maybe the anxiety. Remember, he, he really wept until blood fell in the Garden of Eden. And he had to pray through not my will, but your will. The Lord was speaking to me about that this morning. God doesn't cross our will. And, and Jesus, that's why Jesus had to say, not my will, but your will be done. So Jesus had spent his days sharing what God was like, being an example of what relationship we should have with God uh, free from sin. And he had poured himself day and night into ministering to people, uh, healings, deliverance, salvation, all kinds of things uh, among the Jewish people. And he, he gets on this donkey, and it looks like a wonderful scene. It looks very religious, very spiritual even. But if you, if you read the passage in Luke, what does Jesus do? Can anybody tell me? Was he happy? It says he began to weep. He looked over Jerusalem, and he began to weep. Because for all that it looks like spiritual activity, he knew that they had missed the point that he was their Messiah. That he was getting ready to lay his life down for many people who were at that time rejecting him. That they, they could accept him at, at one level. Okay, we'll accept you're a prophet, but you are not the son of God. And so for all their shouting, Hosanna, save us now. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Da, 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 da. Jesus wept because he knew their heart was far from them. And that convicts me even today. We can get caught up with a lot of religious activity. We can pray and just say a bunch of words and only allow Jesus to touch our life on a certain level and no further. Because he won't cross his will. He will not come where he's not invited. And I was praying this morning. I said, Lord, let me never have another Palm Sunday that it's not a reminder to me that I need to examine myself. We can get so busy doing good stuff, church stuff even, but not allow him to be everything that he wants to be on the inside of us. I think there's so much more that God wants to do for us. So much more he desires for us. But we are only accepting him on a certain level. I'll, I'll come and worship you on Sunday. He said to me, even praise and worship can end up being about what it makes us feel like. Instead of it being pure worship for him. And us opening our hearts and saying, Holy Spirit, 
we welcome you to come deep into the deep places of my life and you work on what needs to be changed. And may you be honored. The Lord said to me that this year that we must focus on that everything that is said and done must be to the honor of the Lord. And Amen. not just say it with words. Amen. But that we live it every day. Lord, may the honor of your name be the focus of my Amen. life, the focus of my walk. So for all of that sounded so great, and I'm sure that Pilate didn't get that kind of welcome. For all of that fanfare and laying their clothes down and all the things that we sacrifice for the Lord, if our heart is not receptive of who he is and what he wants to do, we could end up being just like these same people. You know, it's easy to say, oh, the Jews were so blind, they should have seen it. But sometimes we're so busy that we're blind too. And I'm, I'm certainly not trying to put condemnation, but we, we need conviction sometimes and we need correction. Amen? Amen. Amen. The, the children of Israel were looking to Jesus as a remedy, but Jesus was looking to them for relationship. Amen. And God wants us to come to a place of maturity in our walk with God. Just like the woman who poured the oil out on the feet of Jesus, she wasn't there about what she needed. She was there just to give something beautiful and worship Jesus for everything he's done. The Lord wants us to move into the relationship with God. Yes, he wants us to ask for what we need, but that can't be the focus of our prayer life. That can't be the focus of our relationship. <laughs> that we just want him to make sure that we do well in our business and our family's good. And he, he does want to bless us with those things, but the focus the focus God wants is relationship with Him. Amen? Amen. 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 So this week, give Him some time. Let's, let's turn the TV off for a little while. Get up a little bit earlier in the morning and just say, Lord, I'm going to give you time. I want a deeper relationship with you. I want you to talk to me about what is it that you're wanting to do in my life? Jesus had so much He wanted to do for the children of Israel and work in their lives and fulfill God's purpose. But they, they said, you're a wonderful, wonderful prophet. But just get us out of this Roman rule. It's not interesting to me that Jesus entered when Israel, not when, when they were out of Roman rule, but when they were under heavy oppression, when things are difficult, Jesus came in to live among the people to show them that even in this oppression, you can live with freedom and you can live with victory. And I love that about him. He didn't choose when everything was great. Things are hard to some degree in Kenya, and they're improving. We thank God. But Kenya is blessed. It really is blessed of the Lord. But in the midst of our walk, people, I know there's people who've had business that have suffered, but as we walk among them, may we be like Jesus. May they see that you can have victory in the midst of a hard place, that you can have peace in the midst of a hard place, that you can maintain a relationship with God. Our relationship cannot be based on if we get all our prayers answered. Our relationship with God cannot be based on if I quote enough of that scripture, it has to happen in my life. God is God and he's not on trial. <coughs> Amen? Let me say it again. God is God, and He's not on trial. His word is true. It says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. So we, we just have to set in our heart, Lord, your word is true. I'm following you. I'm walking with you beyond what circumstances are. I'm walking in relationship with you. And I want to end my life, and I know you do too. But it, my, in, my, in my life by saying, I have enjoyed getting to know God. Amen? Amen. 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 I think we'll just stop there. Let's just take a minute. Let's stand to our feet. Maybe there's someone here that has never accepted the Lord as your Savior. And I want to tell you it is a wonderful journey. And it's the best decision you could ever make. Not only for this lifetime, but for eternity. And I invite you, as we close our eyes and bow our heads. And Christians, if you'll be praying.
The Holy Spirit wants to draw somebody to Jesus today. And everything that Jesus paid for, he did it because he loves you and he wants to set you free. And he wants you to enter into a relationship of love and joy and peace and being able to know that he is with you every moment of every day the rest of your life. As you're standing there, if you would like to give your life to Jesus, I just invite you to raise your hand just to let me know. Nobody else is looking around. Just let me know that, yes, today I want to give my life to Jesus. Just raise your hand a little bit. Yes, Lord. I know you've been speaking to me today because you love me. And you'd like me to give my life to you. Anybody here? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Well, let's all just pray together. I want to lead us into a prayer. Heavenly Father. You can repeat after me. Heavenly Father. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word. Thank you that you give us insight. Thank you for And we thank you for this story today. Lord, the people didn't understand what you were really about. And you came and were going into Jerusalem to lay your life down. As the Son of God. As the last lamb to ever be sacrificed for sin. And they didn't understand it. But Lord, I just pray that you will look in my own heart. And if I have not welcomed you where you need to go in my life, I ask that you will show me and I ask you to forgive me, Lord. And I, ask you to forgive me. and I ask for everything that you desire to do in my life. Lord, if there's sin in my life, I ask you to forgive me now. And I declare that you are the Lord of my life. You're the Lord of my present. And you're the Lord of my future. And I give myself to you today in a fresh and new way. 